Swiss researcher Marta Manser is bringing some meerkats to Zurich University as part of a new behavioral research project. She's starting with a female coming from a zoo in France and three male brothers from England. The males are marked with different colors for easier distinction. For the first days of adjustment, the males and the female are kept in separate cages. They're fed with insects, larvae, scorpions, and even little snakes. Mansa began studying meerkats in the Kalahari Desert in South Africa over 15 years ago. She founded an internationally renowned research station in collaboration with Cambridge University. Why are meerkats interesting for research? They live in clans of up to 50 individuals. They strictly share tasks. The dominant male and female are in charge of producing the offspring. Then there are guards, food providers and babysitters. They all communicate with each other using several whistle tones or warning cries. What is it Mansa's hoping to find that can't be observed in the wild? In captivity, in a small space, we can do very specific experiments regarding behavior. How do they learn? How and why do they cooperate with each other? Plus, it allows us to directly include the animals into teaching, to show the students one-on-one -on -one how we carry out such experiments. After four days, the gate is opened and the mating begins. The researchers record every single move. The big surprise is that the youngest gets to mate first. The others wait patiently for their turn. We're hoping to get the first offspring within four months. We're expecting between three and five young animals. In a year, our clan should reach around 12 animals. And six months later, between 15 and 18, the limit of what we can keep here. Pregnancy lasts 10 weeks. After the babies are born, the researchers want to find out who the father is via genetic tests. <laughs> 